Uh, Hello, we have another session expert in political club uh, on the topic of Theom. Uh, we will discuss today's session for two hours. Today's speakers are Gennady Korshinov, ex-director of the Institute of Sociology of the National Academy of Sciences of Belarus. Andrei Vardamatsky, the head of the analytical workshop, Rahorostapenia, director of the new of the analytical Aksana Shelest. Would like to remind you that we are recording the session, we apply the Chatham House rules. Some fragments will be cut out of this session. Please let me know if you want something removed and not quoted. Also, we have a live interpretation to English, so if you would like to listen to us in English, please switch uh, the Zoom settings. I would like to give the floor to commentator Maxim Bajeka. Vadim Bajeka. Good evening to everyone. Yesterday we discussed that we managed to get together almost uh, all the stars of the Belarusian sociology. I'm confident the participants of, will have questions regarding our work. It uh, might as well happen because we have very good experts here. Please the questions in the chat. The first things first, we'll discuss the data. I think the data of the, the survey are a bit different to what we usually imagine when we understand under the Russian survey. It's not just about Putin being the most popular politician in the world. It is the data that is not uh, so usual. Putin's rating uh, is not that high, uh, it is as high as Zelensky in Ukraine. So the data is not typical, it's interesting to discuss it. I think the first question, I'll ask our speakers, we have traditionally three questions. So my question is, what can we say about this uh, data and about this so opinion poll? Based on this data, based on what we have, how much is it similar to uh, how much does it remind a real sociological survey or opinion poll? Right, okay, yeah. Let's have five minutes each. Andre, please, the floor is yours. You're welcome to analyze this poll first. Thank you very much, Vadim. I would like to make a small introduction first. It's about the proportion of the public opinion in the big politics. There are different forms. The first approach is the first form is how similar is the people's opinion and the big political decisions, or several of them. What happens in this case? In this case, uh, the big political leader says that this is not my decision, rather uh, it's what the people want. That's what they want, and uh, that's what I'm doing this for. It's a clear-cut case. The opinion poll results are not in line with the 
political decision. Here, there are two options. There are conducted massive, there's conducted massive media campaign to uh, change uh, the public opinion and adjusted for it to coincide with the big, big, big political decision. And the second approach is to say that uh, Uh, the, the opinion poll is uh, un, uneducated and informed enough to adequately react to the big political decision. And uh, it's, therefore it doesn't understand how genius it is. And then the leader who is considered a priori uh, is the person who has uh, more experience, more information, and uh, possesses political serendipity, uh, announces that his decision is more wise than that of the, the rest of the people, and that only he is um, the major and the most important opinion maker. You will understand why I'm saying this. What happened in front of our eyes regarding the film opinion poll is uh, as another way of modern way of coexistence of the public opinion and the big decision when the public opinion used to exchange opinions between the political leaders one leader says to another using the terms of the public opinion that your plans are not in line with the structure of the opinion poll that has formed and exists or that your decisions or political behavior uh, interferes with my activities because the opinion poll says different. And this modern way of communication is what we have in case of the Tseum opinion poll. One of the leaders sent to another not a telegram like, like it used to be, but uh, uh, a new way of sending message using this uh, sociological numbers is sent. What kind of message is that? That Putin sent to Lukashenko using film figures. The first message is that your rating figures are so low that you will not be able to hold on onto it. Um, I'm the, the force that supports you, not your ratings. So you need to listen to me and do as I say. The power transit with your, uh, as with you is a uh, big question. So you need to listen to me and do as I say. The second message I may and I might as well deal with your opponents, not with you, because they have high ratings. The third message is that power transit involving your friends and your environment is also a problem. Because both you and your environment have, and people surrounding you have very low ratings, very negative ones, more negative than your opponents do. And the fourth message is that my rating inside Belarus is 
going down. Even Ms. Merkel, at the end of a successful political career, has a higher rating in Belarus than me, even though in the past it was the other way around. I used to have the highest rating in Belarus among the foreign leaders. So I really have to support you in this case. So I think these were the messages that are, they could be distinguished based on the information that, uh, it's a warm opinion, poll numbers. It's actually a new message of communication between the leaders. Thank you, Andrei. And they decided to answer the, not the first question, but the second question. He did a great job, but I said, uh, insist on the first question, and I hope that Gennady Korshnov will answer it. How much the, this data uh, is, uh, how much does it look real? How much is it real? Based on this logic, as Andre said, uh, Putin just used the figures he liked to support his messages, or is this data really reflecting the situation? I think that the data is real. Professional sociologists know that it is technically easy to conduct research and uh, uh, using the technology in another country. And in 2020, a series of such polls took place in Belarus, organized by Russian sociologists. So this is, it doesn't, shouldn't surprise us that this opinion poll took place. If we talk about the methodological approaches, There's nothing outstanding uh, in terms of what can inspire or uh, or us in these opinion polls. But uh, we were shown what, what they wanted to show us. And another point that is interesting from the uh, sociological point of view, is the sample. Let's say made a poll involving big cities, obviously. And it's a well-known fact that uh, the bigger the city, the bigger the protest potential. And uh, I believe that sociologists in this case purposefully I use the information that it doesn't show the regime, the Russian regime in the good light. So I decided to work with the protesting audience. In a nutshell, this is a standard research poll, uh, opinion poll. Nothing outstanding in terms of methodology or the fact that it took place. Some points of it make us believe that the, the leak of this information was uh, predetermined and pre-planned. But, but actually the figures, they uh, echo the data received uh, by the, achieved by the Chatham House and the German sociologists, the data con con confirms the results uh, received by other researchers, the data are in lines, which shows that uh, they are quite objective. Thank you, Gennady. 
к следующему нашему спикеру, потому что... Yeah. Uh, let us to our next speaker, since we mentioned the Chatham House research, it would be logical to uh, give floor to Regor, who provides us with such data. On the one hand, we saw that the critics of the Chatham House research say that it's uh, internet poll, there are no rural areas as such. I believe Tsuom uh, made a sample of the bigger cities, even bigger cities than the Chatham House did. At the same time, the data um, is in line with the, another data received by other researchers. So does really the difference in sample effect and results? Again, do you think it's, the figures are realistic? Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Vadim. I'm not a sociologist. I'm, uh, I'm international uh, law scientist, and uh, so it's the I do the thing that lives off other scientists sciences. I would like to react to what you said about the Russian sociologist. But uh, being an alien in the community, I, I uh, don't see that anybody negatively perceives the Tsiom sociologist. These people are usually responsible for what they do, what they say. So it's important to understand why Russia conducts polls in Belarus. Russia likes sociology and its leading class loves it. It's an important part of the decision making to measure everything first. Obviously, they are creative uh, in terms of vote count, but they do like to keep them in check. They like conducting this kind of research. I am um, not surprised that they did it in Belarus. I, they did it in 2020 as well. They continue doing this because the referendum is supposed to take place soon. Then there will be 2023, 2025. So we need to understand that uh, this kind of research will continue in Belarus. and uh, figures will surface regularly. Well, is it uh, similar to, does it look like a real research? Yes, it does. I don't think the we've seen the full presentation. We don't know the det details, but the figures there, they look trustworthy. Maybe not fully, but some things were uh, adjusted, but uh, on the whole, the figures look similar and uh, just were there. Also, I believe that uh, if answering the question why they decided to have a bigger uh, sample consist consistent of big uh, cities and towns. That was their choice. I uh, can understand that, uh, as far as I understand, they're looking at a lot of different research, um, focus group, polls, surveys, telephone surveys, and so on and so forth. And if you measure opinions every two or three weeks using different methodology, you might as well yeah, um, use different approaches. I don't think it should be considered something strange. In the past, they did it in some other way. Now it's this is their approach. Without a doubt, there are different ways of doing this. 
so I wouldn't really look for any secret reasons and any conspiracy here. They just could do this this way and they did it. I guess I answered the question. I'm not sure about the methodology. We didn't see any slides with their methodology, so we cannot judge. But it looks like a uh, real and trustworthy. Thank you, Rehor. Uh, you did a great overview commenting on how sociologists in Russia approach to what they do. This is important to understand if the figures are realistic. Of course, we see that and we cannot guarantee anything, but in terms of methodology, we formulated this question before the information surfaced. This is a, a good example of a situation when we, without having any end results, by looking at the uh, survey form, we can say that the ECOM uh, survey will be manipulative in its approach. As you can see, in terms of Tsiom Minipol, this is not the case. It looks much better. Last but not least, I wanted to give uh, floor to Oksana Shelist. Um, Oksana is a professional sociologist. Oksana, what do you think about this research? How uh, realistic are these figures? How well was it conducted based on what we have, based on the information that we have? Let me outline several contexts that are important for the perception of this information as such. First, it's on this leak, whatever it's called, has, has been overestimated in Belarus. When you invited me to participate in this discussion, I was surprised because uh, I think this is this was a thing of the past. Still, this topic remains important for some, and I believe it's the influence of Russia in our head because everything happened in Russia uh, is considered by Belarusians as significant, even though we can discuss any kind of research. and understanding how the research was conducted, we can ask the, the sociologist about that. We still continue to uh, discuss whether film figures are real or trustworthy. This is sad. On the other hand, I understand why it's happening. It's not only happening because we cannot get rid of Russia in our heads, but also because the public opinion issue has become a um, very important tool of information war, particularly when we have limited um, possibilities and limited access to relevant data and knowledge. What we do with our resources cannot be fully considered significant and we are trapped by this. We need always to look for other sources. I believe that the fact that such means uh, approaches are used by our Russian uh, partners, counterparts, enemies is uh, understood. But as to this very opinion, well, I would uh, treat it as a poll and I'll treat a leak as a leak. I'm, I may not be very proficient in 
conspiracy theories and we all discuss and conspiracy theories here uh, trying to understand who leaked what and why because we don't know the reason this uh, data has a lot of unpleasant information not only for the Belarusian regime but also for the Russian officials the anti-rating of Putin and the lack of enthusiasm of Belarusians regarding the integration confirm this I don't think it uh, uh, was done this leak was done uh, for the sake of Kremlin the way uh, the data is presented doesn't look suspicious the data is present in the professional way. There are no problems. There are no uh, shortage, shortcomings made by ECAOM or other pseudo sociologists. Although we know that uh, as professionals, that um, adjusting these numbers is uh, difficult. I don't think Zoom has difficult, difficulty accessing to public opinion in Belarus. So I would um, treat this as regular opinion poll and uh, would treat the leak in the same way. What can we, what kind of lesson we can draw from that? Judging it as a big game of big people. These are two things. First, it's, it is, Mm. something that tells us about the state of the Belarusian society and it's important for us to see that the data does not correlate with the data that we receive from other sources to whom, whom we trust more. Secondly, nobody really uh, spoke about that, but we didn't, don't understand what Russian sociologists are interested in. If we look in detail at the data that we received, there are various uh, funny mo moments. Of course, they're interested in protesting moods and uh, trust of Belarusians into governmental bodies, which is quite low. One of the funny details here is that uh, uh, People, uh, sociologists, uh, interested not only in what those think of Lukashenko, but uh, they're also interested in what those think about uh, other political elite, political leaders like uh, Rumas Kachanova, public opinion in Belarus. does not think much of these people, apparently, so the ratings of such people are quite low. If uh, we should treat this rating seriously, uh, and we want to understand something about us, not only about the big game, we should understand that this is also very important. Thank you. Thank you, Oksana. Indeed. Uh, this is very interesting that uh, Russian soldiers are trying to understand who Belarusian put their trust in. Well, as to what we think about Russian, Russian soldiers, uh, if uh, this discussion happened 10 days ago, we would discuss it differently. Right, I think uh, we've come to the conclusion that the data looks real. The data seems uh, echoing the results of other polls, and we started discussing why the data has emerged. Aksana said that she doesn't want to guess why it was done now. Andrei Petrovich actually started with answering this question. So I wanted to ask this question uh, to Gennady and Rigor. Why this data appeared, has appeared recently? Apart from what Mr. Damaski said, what kind of logic would be behind this? 
uh, based on what Seums is saying, there, there were similar waves in the past. And the motivation of Putin is, uh, uh, listen to me, address to Lukashenko. Why has it been done recently? Well, we can speculate on that because it's hard to be concrete about this, like a concrete proposal. But the only option that I have is to, uh, they are trying to push. It's difficult to be more concrete. We see the tip of the iceberg regarding the two politicians. They had a telephone conversation several times. And then there was a cold phase in the relationship. We get leaks about what they discuss and how they do it. The only thing we can say is that it was an attempt to exert pressure also at the level of a leak in the information that is not particularly pleasant for Russia. It could be an option that could be that that's not a devaluation but a light headed uh, Uh, approach to the topic of the integration. Uh, looks like Belarusians are not particularly interested in that, and uh, they have a different opinion about Putin and Russia. Again, I'm speculating here. I can continue doing that, but uh, I don't. I don't think I want to. I just uh, want to highlight the fact that there's a instance of pressure coming from Russia. Thank you, Hinaid. Rehor? Right. Uh, why this? Again, this question, why it has been leaked now? We don't know transcript of uh, what Lukashenko said to Putin in the telephone conversation, but based on what we have, why did it happen? And did it affect anything or anyone? Thank you, Vadim. It could be uh, uh, disinformation, or it could be a uh, chaos. I, uh, I believe it's a chaotic leak. This is uh, uh, the presentation that of the data that has positive and negative data about Belarus. This is a website of Khodorkovsky. based on coronavirus, coronavirus limitations that we have uh, in terms of personal meetings. A lot of information is sent by mail and some information is made public, the information that it shouldn't have been made public. So uh, uh, it's not a surprise for me that a leak happened and was done. Somebody got, got their hands on it and decided to leak it. So I uh, I would choose the option of it being a chaotic leak, not a special pressure. I don't think we should make a bet on this. It just happened. Uh, there's nothing extra important, extra special here. It's interesting. We have just said that that there was a small presentation at the Khodorkovsky website that uh, doesn't look like uh, Kremlin will be masterminded. After a while, do you think this a leak affected what happened in Belarus? If we talk about the pressure on 
mentioned by Akstana and Unite. Do you think it was uh, th this pressure was a success? Judging by the latest behavior of Putin Lukashenko, do you think uh, the latest leak or pressure could affect this? I think Alexander Lukashenko is the person who famous uh, by its negative attitude to sociology. I don't think it thus that uh, it would somehow affect uh, his behavior for him and for those, those top officials. No secret that Russia is conducting polls in Belarus. It's no secret that Russians know the uh, real results of the 2020 election and not the figures he presented as proper and has been living it with uh, for a while. I don't think it's a problem for him. I, I can say that Mekel is more popular than you. So I don't think any explosion here in relation to this data. Again, this is not the data that uh, is something special regarding Belarus. They basically echo what has been made public in the past. Thank you, Rehor. Andrei or Oksana may have something to add. Aksana said that she doesn't want to speculate, uh, but after Rigor's comment, I see Aksana waving her hand. I uh, can't speculate on this, but we cannot believe that in Russia somebody leaked this information on purpose. Not an order of Putin or Kremlin, but there are just uh, people leaking this information just for the sake of doing this, just like cyber partisans do. But if we consider that this is an action of Kremlin, which I believe I don't think is very rational, I would uh, perceive it as something, not as pressure, but uh, public trolling the public regularly applies to drugs towards Lukashenko. We've seen many facts and instances of this. They have been more or less prepared uh, the uh, hint at the dialogue or with opposition or mention Tikhanovskaya and so on. This could be uh, like an action done to get reaction feedback or could be based on or be, can be often to do with some agreement between these two people. These agreements that were discussed in August 2020, looks like Putin is not happy with what is happening. This constant pressure coming from Russia And uh, time, time to time, there are public moves that we see and witness. If we consider this action using this logic, even though it seems it's improbable, these actions would have a similar, would be made in a similar key as the actions of the last and this year. I can make three remarks. This hasn't been mentioned. Everybody agrees on that, that the data very much echoes, uh, coincides with the data produced by other sociological services from different countries. It looks like if we 
recognizes data is valid has uh, increased actually trust improved trust in non-state sociological services um, i have a personal interest in this in the history of opinion polls uh, was a case when in 2019 within a month there was a, a big decrease of the in the opinion of belarusians who were in favor of living in the union with russia and there was a remark coming uh, from some reflection ideologist who said that Bordomatsky sold that to Warsaw. Looks like Tseom has changed his geopolitical orientation using the diplomatic language. As to the, whether this opinion poll was prepared, I think it was the history of Russian soldiers research and building opinions is a long-standing one both using the quantitative and qualitative approach in this sense there are two countries that are doing this in Belarus it's Russia and the United States this is happening this has been happening for a while and this one of this is one of the episodes one of the points of when the Russian sociological service decided to evaluate uh, assess the opinion polls a few words about what film is film is uh, highly professional service with uh, uh, very advanced skilled staff without mentioning the viewpoint the financial possibilities and skill sets are very advanced in terms of uh, technical capabilities how often do you think Tseom conducts the national surveys national opinions i'm not going to answer this question because uh, they do it every day national opinion polls at least there were uh, times like that with a sample of 1600 people the sample is bigger than that and and those for the reason that the opinion of the we have uh, different numbers of people living in the countries so technically and professionally capable of doing this the citizens of russia and the world can can learn about the, what people think about the color of socks of this or that political figure this is their, their capabilities form and levada are also very strong it is through russia that western technologies came to us uh, at the beginning of the 90s in terms of the form survey forms and the sample it was shocked when we saw the survey forms based on what we used to work with in the sociological institute thank you
Andrei Petrovich is a true rock and roller. At the beginning of the first question, he answered the second one and the other way around. Right, let's uh, move to the third question. We we'll have only one question remaining. Then we'll have a Q&A session. During this discussion, we highlighted the fact that this is not the data that the FCOM received. We were shown only part of the data. It could be that they wanted to show at this part or was a random leak. But in both cases, this opinion poll taken separately, that lacks uh, the full data for the complete understanding, proper comprehensive understanding. And since we agreed on the fact that some data correlates with the data of uh, Chatham House and Zoys and other data sources. Let's think what other questions and answers could be added to this for a more comprehensive understanding of the Belarusian picture. What do we know about the moods of Belarusians based on other research polls? We'll start with uh, Rehor because uh, you know more about the Chatham House data than all of us. When you were reading this film data, what other data could, could have been added to this for clearer picture? Honestly, I don't see any reason to discuss this in more detail than we have. I'd say that they basically overlap and we look at leaks or other data. I don't see any discrepancy here. I don't see any reason to compare it. What we see based on Russian data is what we would be probably Belarusians uh, living in the cities over 100 citizens think. I can only say that uh, in a month we have a new wave. We'll be glad to share the, with your results. So, uh, basically, you don't think what to add about the other points that were not mentioned in this leak. Again, I don't really know. I think other speakers have already mentioned that they're doing a lot of a lot of polls and research they're interested in the working with the uh, uh, focus groups uh, so they conduct in telephone polls online polls trying to f find what they uh, what kind of information they didn't provide us is futile i think they uh, ask questions about everything they're interested in they ask Belarusians about the attitude to Putin or other concrete officials and Russia in general, all these things. Are actively discussed, uh, collected and analyzed. There are departments of where people make special files of this. They have culture of doing this. Uh, uh, in conditions of authoritarian regimes, uh, it actually gives you additional stimulus so to research things. Uh, when you mentioned the cultural files and 
while making in Russia, I thought we were not talking about sociology, but, but about something else. Right. Uh, Rus Russians may have asked what they were wanted to know. But uh, based on this data, what can we do? What can we think different about uh, other political institutions and uh, political leaders? Basically, you are asking what else they should have asked, or they did ask, from what we don't know. I'm asking what else should Belarusians be asked about following the examples of Tseom opinion polls? So this kind of data that would allow us to better understand Tseom and their approaches For me, there were two factors of appeal in terms of this research. First is the I use this as a, uh, the term of pressure from Russia. I really like the Oksana's term of trolling and they like the part that uh, the data of the three polls uh, overlap that was important but uh, um, i don't think i could add something regarding to what hasn't been done but basically it's enough for me what i lack There's a number of topics that I'm interested in, but uh, they require much wider, more comprehensive research. But I'm um, more than happy with what I read uh, regarding this opinion post. But let's reformulate the question. What kind of data would be nice to have? I would be interested to learn how the information consumption change across the board, because uh, it's uh, difficult to tackle the group of people that are not connected uh, to the internet. It would be interesting for me to understand the level of fear that distorts the replies in the modern society because uh, the easily a dozen of topics like that it would be interesting for me to see uh, the research on telegram chats on uh, neighborhood neighborhoods big number of topics that uh, had to cover in current conditions the big number of topics like that uh, going back to instagram chat i think Oksana conducted a poll regarding the telegram chats of course so all my telegram chats are two different topics and approaches but What other data do you think we need? And uh, we should remember in the context of film. I think film should be left behind because it gave us some figures that we consider to be a professional, but I don't, I shouldn't really dwell further on that. I think the most important thing now in terms of analysis is uh, what 
the data of other research show that we see, that we compare. I think it's important now to understand that in the last year we have been in the station when the public mood even though the political situation shows different dynamics and the street protests have different dynamics, there's difference in opinions, difference in uh, views did not really change. And the values in the society did not change. I think this needs to be shown now. And this sense of Tsehom could be of great help because the, the data of Tsehom and the, the, the latest opinion shows that people still uh, negatively think of uh, the actions of the government. The split, which is not split, is still there. In the Belarusian society, we still have a shaky situation where the 30% of active participants, proponents of changes, about 25-30% of people who are in favor of status quo and the number of people who are, on the other hand, not ready to be active about uh, this, uh, but don't support what happened in 2020, are against violence and demand uh, justice, investigation of what happened in 2020, and so on and so forth. And the fact that a year after, or more than a year after, after the active phase of the protest movement, these moods remain, says a lot about the Belarusian society. We can use different polls and uh, judging by the change in the, like, absence of change in the people views, we can say that it helps us to understand the situation we're living now, this one that's dead end, when the Belarusian authorities and the Belarusian society are in a long-term stalemate. We're all using our, our, own, our own approaches and the authorities are using violence. This balance is not shifting to any sides, yes. So still with this stalemate. It's good that today we have the possibility to conduct representative research. We understand the framework of this presentation, but when this is conducted, in dynamic logic, logic and approach, we can trust it more than before. As to the concrete poll, uh, it's important now not only to survey the public opinion, to understand the public opinion in the country, but it's also important to attach to the groups or these forces that are ready for changes. Because even if someone understands that citizens of big cities are much more interesting audience than the uh, other citizens, because they are more active, they're more powerful than anyone else. One of the important uh, vectors here is a that attached to them political groups and protest groups and communities. They still remain. It, the situation with toolkit is complicated, but it is what it is. I agree, Oksana, nothing easy about it. Andre, should we, do you want to add something? I have several remarks, if I may. 
the main social facts of this research is not the figures, but the fact that it was made, they were made public. Secondly, we see a different culture of establishment using the sociological data and different frequency of this research appearing. Also, we need to understand that in many ways it uh, is coming from the leader. Uh, Putin, GDR, youth, where the need for sociological data to be there. And we see this slowly crawling into the establishment culture when before every event there is a big sociological research conducted. We don't want to judge them, but the sociological element is used. Also, I would like to see more dynamics here. I would like to know whether the Russians know the dynamics of the ratings of the incumbent, of the acting leader, and other leaders, his opponents, uh, do they know the dynamics of the geopolitical orientation and so on. Regarding what should have been added, or I don't think there is a anything that I wouldn't want to have more information on. Personally, the, the most interesting factor for me was the big focus on uh, decisive economic reforms. It's not just economic reform, it's just the decisive economic reforms, um, which shows that uh, the desire to change the identity. The word decisiveness, a decisive has never been dominated in our discourse in Belarus and public opinion. And here the decisive, 70% support the decisive economic reforms. Thank you. After 2020, we still can surprise ourselves. Uh, which is great. Anton, I think we have some questions in the chat. Uh, I wanted to ask a question. Mr. Drakahurst, please. Hello. I have a question regarding the contents of uh, several responses in a wider context. Those sociologists have uh, said several times that the attitudes of Belarusians towards Russians is getting worse. But based on this film research, the, the most important question is, I mean, the positively, is about Belaya flights and uh, talks between Lukashenko Putin and the price of natural gas next year. And the worsening of relations. My question is uh, wider. We remember the date of the Chatham House when from October until now, the majority of people while answering to the question if they want to be with Russia or not, they said with both, with two magnets, we're here and there. I would uh, also want all of you to comment on the following. In the Chenham House survey, there was a question whether you attitude to Putin has changed. 30% of the people said yes, it became worse. But uh, would you think of him, the next question, over the majority? Uh, 50% say 
we approve of his actions. Uh, so the big question is whether it's got worse or better based on the data of Phil and Jam House polls. Thank you, Yuri. Rehor, can you comment on this difference? I think uh, Oksana was the first to raise her hand. I'll follow her. Unfortunately, I see only four pictures of the speakers on my phone screen. I wanted to comment on what you asked about the film. That's exactly what they asked. For me, it's one of the affirmations that uh, the questions came from the Russian sociologist. There are kinds of questions that Belarusians would never ask. In terms of ambivalence, of attitude, uh, in terms of massive attitude to Russia, this is a well-discussed, uh, well-discussed topic. We all, either we want it or not, we must understand that in the public opinion, Russia is a neighbor a special neighbor, the data of the Tseom's opinion polls are quite critical in the sense that the dynamics are negative because about 56% of people said they're in favor of uh, co cooperation with Russia in terms of R&D and so on. It's much worse in terms of Putin's rating in the union state. So this is the attitude that remains. It doesn't really change too much. We uh, saw that in the protest surveys in uh, August, we had a a lot of people saying that Russians are fine and good neighbor, but the politics policy of Putin is not that good. And support of the regime that is illegitimate and affects the Belarusians' attitude to uh, Russian political leaders and not to Russia. I think this uh, very mature position of oppositions. I want to clarify something. You said that uh, the Belarusians approve of Russians, but they may approve of have good attitude to Zanzibar, Poland, and others. So, so you notice some special attitude towards Russia. Institutional approach, Yuri. For us, attitude to Russia will always be special because uh, we're very close in many ways, culturally, uh, in terms of human dimension and economically for us. This attitude to Russia will not be the same as to Zanzibar. It's conditioned by a wider range of factors. We're much more connected to Russia in many respects. We can start tr having a bad attitude, a good attitude to Russia, but I don't think we'll be ever uh, indifferent. But going back to your question, this is one of the paradoxes, but it's paradoxical in the sense that in the Belarusian society, there has never been a public discussion in this regard. I remember the date of the Chatham House when the majority of people wanted to be everywhere, which is impossible formally. But I also remember the date of Nisepi, which shows that over the last 15 years, that there was a dynamics in terms of lack of clear-cut political choice in favor of the, EU, of the Union with Russia. And this 
growing desire to build an independent state was also visible. We can discuss whether this is manageable in the current conditions, whether it's possible to stay between the two fronts, big geopolitical formations, but the fact that people have this trial is a long standing thing. This has been here for decades. It became more prominent in 20, 2020s, and we need, but we need to consider it. Rahor, can you reply for Russia? I think that we have mentioned that many, many times that the Western attitude to, towards Putin and Russia will be evident among the people who support the protest. We've spoken about that and it did happen. Answering the question why we have 30% of uh, people that have a worse attitude to Russia, but uh, the stable positive attitude still remains. It's important to say that this Western attitude happens within the framework of the general Western of the attitude towards Putin. When people say that, that my attitude has become worse, Before that, they had a similar attitude to Putin. And there are people whose attitude had gone worse, but were still positive about Putin. They say he's a good guy, he's just he's been there for too long. In this respect, we have noticed that uh, happening several times. If we talk about neutrality, I can only say that uh, today we have presented a new research paper on uh, neutrality in Belarus. And I suggest uh, you read this paper, which is 40 pages long. We refer to sociological data that show that Belarusians feel close to this idea of being neutral something, someone in between. I don't think it's a result of long steady intellectual work. Here I will agree with Oksana, it will probably the result of absence, absence of uh, choice. Persons find it better in, the, in between. In many ways, this is something that needs to be discussed. So far, we've seen that this topic has not, as issue has not been acute in Belarus society, but Belarusians feel for it. Thank you, Rehor. I can only add that you can read the short version of your paper, not only on the side of the new ideas, but also in the Bank of Ideas. It was there that I found it? I may be right, or may write a review to the, on this. I heard uh, Yuri's question, and I had a feeling that <laughs> of personal life, you can treat a person in a good, a good bad way, but uh, if they do something bad, you have a worse issue to it. Just like we said about Putin and the Russian's attitude to him. And the response of Belarus is that we want to be at the same time with the EU and Russia. It looks like a love triangle. 
man says, I, uh, I like Masha and Ola. I want to live with both of them. I want everyone to love each other. It may sound unrealistic, just like it is for the Union of Russia and the EU, but it would be great to have something like that. I don't think it will happen, but it would be great to have something like that. Jokes aside, let's go back to... Um, I think Andrei Petrovich wants to add something. I just wanted to respond to Yuri regarding the change of attitude towards Russia. My attitude to kebab got worse because uh, as a child I uh, had a fantastic kebab in the Middle Asia, but I still like it as a dish. It's a normal psychological approach and psychological scheme that works everywhere. It cannot be wrong. Secondly, this contradiction is an internal characteristics of the post-totalitarian conscience. Uh, Yuri knows very well about it. Are you in favor of market economy? Of course we are, say the respondents. The next question asks, should the state subsidize agriculture? The person sincerely says yes, and so on and so forth. This contradictory approach is inbuilt here. I don't think there'll be any exclusion. I mean, the regarding the special attitude to Russia, of course, we have the approach of us and them here. In terms of values, whether we prefer that those of the West of Russia, none of the respondents replies what the Russian or Slavic values. But when you ask people about their attitude to towards Russia, Russia is us and not them in this scheme of things. Thank you. Also, in terms of Europe and the West, uh, we heard a figure of 40 by 40. Forty by forty was before twenty two thousand and four. It was a stable response by vectoral mass conscience. Now we witness fluctuations. We saw increases towards Russia and so on and so forth. Compared to the 40 by 40 constant, we're not there yet, but we're moving toward, towards that. Alexander, you wanted to add something? I understand this is not uh, particularly relevant, but I want to react to this. I uh, add to what Andrei Petrovich said. It's a big responsibility that lies with sociologists who formulate questions in the forms. If you formulate the questions, if you want to be at the same time with the EU and with the Union State, the people will answer in a way, in some way. But the responsibility for such question lies with the sociologist. But the strange attitude to obligations to their own political self identification. It's not uh, considered mature, but we have a long standing intellectual tradition about this, and we shouldn't treat this as a 
uh, a lack of desire to choose, a desire to be in the middle, because except for Abdelalovich, who is part of our history, there is Vladimir Matskevich, Popkov, Akudovich, a number of other modern philosophers who uh, foundation, the foundation of Belarus as a, a separate cultural and civilization object. So I wouldn't treat it uh, with condescension, wouldn't treat it as uh, immaturity of the Belarusian society. Our maturity is, uh, requires additional thinking and discussion. I know that's not just something we should we're discussing today, but I uh, could keep silent about this. Thank you, Aksana. It is expected that we may move away from the questions announced for today. Another question in the chat. Maria Avdeeva has joined us. Thank you. Hello. It was interesting to uh, listen to from the sociological point of view, just like Rigor. Uh, my, an expert in international science. My question is, recently we saw a lot of uh, public uh, opinions with unclear objects of discussion. And here I mean the latest article by Surkov and Medvedev and Putin. Uh, Lukashenko giving some messages to Putin uh, during the BBC interview which looks like trolling. What do you think, who is the thing is the user, end user of this? We're supposed to be listening to this. If we believe that Tim's poll was a leak, supposed to affect somebody, who are the people who are supposed to hear it? Is it the people, the Belarusians? Russians or Lukashenko, who are they addressed at? I gave you an example of Surkov's article because everybody is discussing it, but do you think he's saying that to Putin? He's writing this for Putin. Does he want to be back into politics or? Is he addressing the Ukrainian government and leadership? Who is the end user here? That's the question. Thank you for the question. Who is ready to answer it? Gennady Korshnev had to leave us. Of course, when a lot of messages like this surface, there's no single end user. I believe this uh, sign of kind of inertia when activities, some things happen that just happened. I don't think the leak happened because somebody wanted to influence Lukashenko, his opinions. I'm not sure, but somebody got, got a hold of it get, and they decided to share it. The interview with BBC journalist, there are things and messages uh, 
for other people. I don't think it was made on purpose. I don't think Alexander Lukashenko was thinking during an interview about concrete formulas and messages. I think it was um, very much in, made in, in an ad hoc manner. So I think there's no general wave of, of campaign in this regard. Thank you, Rigor. Oksana, Andrei, do you want to add something? Okay, ladies, first, it's hard for me to say something about this because these messages were not addressed to me. A lot of games are being played these days. This is not my sphere of confidence to analyze the messages of Surkov. It, they may be important, but I think we should consider them. I am particularly interested in what is happening inside Belarus rather than in Russia. Thank you, Oksana. Andrei? I wanted to comment not about Sarko, but about the own opinion poll. In this case, we could uh, mention several target groups. We could have two clusters here. The first group is the group that uh, is targeted on purpose. The, this uh, sociological message is addressed at uh, top tier of the establishment. But the case is, in every message, there is some unplanned target group or, or side uh, effect target groups regarding the digital message that originated in the SLEEK. The middle level of the Belarusian establishment Judging by this, the nomenclature may think that uh, that maybe they shouldn't really resist further if um, this is what the Kremlin wants. And the second unplanned target group is the opposition, which for a reason for some reason, could get inspired by this leak and this information, thinking that the Kremlin understands that Belarus is different to what, to how it, uh, it is officially portrayed by the Belarusian media, Belarusian official media. Thank you. Oksana wants to add something. I would like to add to what Andrei Vardamaski said. This explanation is possible. I don't like the conspir conspiracy theories. And, but in our discussions of the conspiracy theories, we have been uh, walking in circles for a year. The situation uh, in Belarus has frozen for a year. All the things are happening. Unfortunately, for, any, for many people, they are dangerous. I mean, here, pressure, repression, and so on. But uh, 
basically the situation has not changed all the players here and they'll repeat their actions and it's not only about the proponents of the protest and uh, Lukashenko but also it's about the signals and desire to change something over the last 18 months because we have need to witnessed this several times and these are approaches that somebody is using to change the status quo but it's still the same this is exactly what i asked you it may look like this is now in this surface in the dimension when there is some data appearing and nobody knows who end user is while in the past there were some special channels were used for this they were not public but now it's i may uh, be imagining things but uh, people uh, start discussing who was it addressed at and was it done on purpose or not if you're following the the situation the not so long ago the russian history and foreign affairs published the diplomatic correspondence of Lavrov with uh, his counterparts, which was unexpected. It's uh, not only interesting to see what was there, but uh, it was interesting to note the attitude of Lavrov to his counterparts and uh, Karbalevich, do you want to add something? If not, Valery Ivanovich, I want to add a remark. I think this leak of the film is uh, in the same line as Putin's appeal for Lukashenko to have a dialogue with the opposition. This is a reflection of the serious tension in relationship between the Minsk and Moscow, because Minsk is not fulfilling the agreements about the power transit, power transfer uh, reached in Sochi in September 2020. Thus, uh, by this prompt, Lukashenko, Moscow and Kremlin wants to push Lukashenko towards uh, fulfilling those uh, promises. Thank you, Valery Ivanovich. Andrei Vodomatsky nodding. Thank you very much for this uh, clear cut remark. Um, well, what, uh, well, yeah. Alexander, unfortunately, I don't believe that these signals or similar signals testify uh, that they want to have real negotiations with Belarus. I know that dialogue is not possible, it's only negotiations that are possible. Currently, we have 184 political prisoners in Belarus, and uh, that's only based on the official data from human rights organizations. I think uh, Moscow is not the guarantor of the democratic negotiations that we need to expect. The fact that Moscow wants to see the trans transfer of power looks like normalization. I wouldn't call it a dialogue or movement towards a joint democratic future. It is obvious that Belarus, Moscow wants to see a local station normalize. And what they're showing is that uh, an order should be 
the law should be made and put, should be put in order. But I don't think it's a sign that Lukashenko, Putin wants Lukashenko to have a real negotiations with the opposition. We've had some questions. Thank you, Oksana. I had a spontaneous thought that this appeal to dialogue could be uh, is similar to something happened very rarely, but it can be considered as an appeal to the transformation of the political agenda towards Russia. Because Putin regularly meets with Zyuganov, Zhirinovsky, those people are members of the opposition that are not in prison. Of course, they are nothing like Navalny, but we see that Russian political model is more com complex and more stable than the Belarusian one. So this could be interpreted as a desire of Kremlin to see the Belarusian model become similar to the Russian one. Not democratic, but more clear for the Kremlin and easier to Belarus. communicate with. Uh, Does anybody else want to add any remarks or comment? If not, uh, we can conclude a, a discussion. We have discussed a lot of things today. We don't know the truth behind the, the leak from film. But the versions are, have spread. I would like to thank all of our today's speakers who uh, sacrificed the 90 minutes of their time for today's discussion. Anton has put the uh, invitation to the Belarusian presentation of the Belarusian yearbook to be held on Friday. Uh, this year, the presentation did not take place on time. Many authors and editors of the yearbook, including Marie Kistikova, are still behind bars. Still, the presentation will take place, and I invite everyone to join this presentation the same time as today. I'd like to thank everyone for participation. I'd like to thank all the guests that uh, asked the questions that enriched the discussion. I would like to thank everyone and uh, until next time. Thank you. It's a sacrifice, this is an investment. I represent the Bosa University, not the analytical workshop. We're glad to see all of you. Thank you.